Well, folks, welcome to Max's Models After Hours. Unfortunately, due to the weather here in Florida, which is rather extreme, I can't get out to the Tarvis or the Tamiya and Ravel boxes and storage unit. So I thought I would go ahead and give a stab at just doing an old school podcast. Just my buttery smooth voice to some pictures that will hopefully represent what I'm talking about. First off, I want to extend a huge thanks to Andy Yanchis, who I just got uh, done having a two and a half hour telephone interview with. Uh, Mr. Yanchis spent uh, almost a decade over at Aurora from the mid 60s to the uh, early to mid 70s. And he has so much information that it's going to take me a while to collate it into probably more than one video. Also, he has a great collection of vintage Japanese box art and a lot of the old Strombecker catalogs. He's also done a lot of work with Rick and Pete over at Atlantis, and he is an absolute reservoir of knowledge. I'm sure we'll probably talk again, but it's going to take me a while to digest what I've got and put it into some sort of format because we wound up talking about just about everything under the sun. Also, in reference to the Sanwa controller I talked about earlier. I had made a mention that I was curious how it went together and by golly if Mr. Zelensky didn't go ahead and send me a picture of the instruction sheet. So I'm just going to pan by that real slow and let us all take a quick look at it. Given that this predates the monogram sky stick by many years, there's something about this that just intrigues me. I think it's, it was a very novel concept and I realize it was probably just a marketing tool, but when you think about all of the engineering and work that went behind turning this rather interesting idea into a real working thing, that merits a little bit of respect. Having been sent these pictures after I've already made the video it made me think that from now on, maybe when I've got something that's hard to research before I complete the video, I'll just mention in one of our little broadcasts what I'm looking for because one of you guys may have it. A couple of the companies that I'm working on right now are Nito and Nishimo, or Nichimo, uh, I'm not really exactly sure the proper way to say that. I know a couple of you guys out there are better with these Japanese names than I am. So if you know the correct way to say it, go ahead and shoot me an email or put it in the comment section below. Uh, Nichimo later became Nichimoko. They uh, just extended their name. That was shortly before they ceased kit model operations. I'm also working on a project for Strombeck Becker, which later became Strombecker because Mr. Yanchus had so much good information on that, it should facilitate making a more coherent video. As you know, Strombecker was one of the first model companies. They were like Monogram in that they made wooden models first, then wooden and partly plastic, and then migrated over completely to plastic. And I always wondered why they ceased operations at Kit Models right when things were booming, and Andy had some information on that, so that'll really help make a better video. I also want to thank Mr. J.E. Lowry, uh, the Otaki uh, George showed up, the uh, Shinden N1K1J, and it's a beautiful kit, a 148 scale. I had mentioned that I'd never built an Otaki kit before, even though they were a rather prolific Japanese kit manufacturer, and by golly, he sent me one. And this is not a cheap kit. I really appreciate that very much. Just tonight, someone made a comment that they thought perhaps a build video on a vintage classic kit might be a good idea. And since it's the same day that this arrived, I'm taking that as a sign that this, this kit might be a good candidate for that. It's a classic kit. Otaki did have a few classic kits. The George was one. The other was the Willow biplane. And it would make an interesting build video or at least go over the components inside because it gives you a comparison of the kits made in the 60s and 70s compared to what is made now. I gave a quick look at the kit so far, and it looks very nice, certainly for the age of the kit. And I think that would be a relatively straightforward one to do. The decals, look, they, they may still be good, but if not, I still have plenty of uh, Japanese decals that I can use. So I'll see if I can't get going on that. Unfortunately, I did not get any work done on the models today because of the weather. I was afraid to even walk the 10 feet over to the Tarbis, and it's also a lot of lightning out here. So that's right. Yeah, I chickened out. Just a quick reminder, if I don't put out an evening video or a morning video, it just means that something came up. And depending on how my schedule goes, I may have to cut back to one video a day or less. Of course, the whole thing started off 
almost as a lark. It's just a completely informal thing. But I'm glad some folks are enjoying it. It's an opportunity for us to get together and just chat and comment to one another. Doesn't even have to be about what I'm talking about that day. You can put anything in the comment section related to models. It's all good. One thing I knew was going to happen this morning when I uh, mentioned that uh, document drama on the CF-105 Arrow, you cannot mention that airplane without getting a debate going. And sure enough, some folks warmed up their keyboards. And I'm glad they did because it's nice to see that passions are still alive about a thing like that. My personal opinion is that although the docudrama certainly takes liberties, I think it does a fair job of getting the basic story across. The closest I ever came to getting in a bar fight in Canada was over the CF-105. When I was a regional jet pilot, one of the local Canadians found out I was an airline pilot, and that was the first thing he brought up. And I didn't know as much about it then as I do now. And of course, I just agreed with him because I didn't want to get tossed in a Canadian jail. But another Canadian started disagreeing with him, and the two of them went at it, and it was like, oh, this must be what it was like to listen to the Canadian Parliament back in 57, because they were jockeying back and forth about all the causes for it, but I know it's a real controversy. I still think it's one of the greatest planes that never was and probably should have been, as I said this morning, right up there with the TSR. And, of course, America's had its share of aircraft that could have, should have, would have. One of the things I forgot to mention was that in that docudrama, you're going to see a lot of kit models of the CF-105, aside from the big desktop display stuff. And I find it ironic that the Canadian government was so busy trying to destroy anything related to it. Depending on who you want to believe, it could have been security reasons, or it could have been to placate the American Aircraft Company. Or There's a dozen theories, and might be a little truth to all of them. Yet there are already plastic model kits of the airplane being sold all over the world. And it's funny because it does make you appreciate how important models are. Also, I would add that uh, now that I'm talking about this, I'm probably going to have to get a CF-105. It just is such a slick airplane. I mean, you could park a CF-105 on the set of Star Wars, right amongst all the X-Wings and TIE Fighters, and it would look like it fits right in. For that matter, you could do the same thing with a TSR. In fact, if somebody making the next Star Wars movie wanted to have a little fun, they should slip a TSR and a CF-105 zipping by in the background. I don't know if you guys know this. I happened to catch it about the fifth time I watched uh, Battlestar Galactica, the pilot episode. But when uh, Rosalind's talking to her doctor and all the ships are flying overhead, just for a couple of seconds, you'll see a Serenity Firefly descending in the background. Now, I wonder how many of you are going to go look that up on YouTube. Trust me, it's there. Anyway, uh, if I can find the clip, I'll just stick it up here. So, uh, uh, I just never get tired of talking about this stuff, as you probably glean by this point. Ah, the CF-105, the... Man, it breaks my heart. And I wasn't even there. To zip off on a tangent for just a second, the CF-105, in my opinion, came about because... For great things to be accomplished, whether it's the pyramids or the space program, basically takes three things. It takes the will, the, the desire to do it. It takes the resources to do it. And it takes the ability to do it. And for that one time in history in the late 50s, Canada had all three. The RCAF knew they needed the airplane. A.V. Rowe had the necessary brain trust and skill set to carry it out. They had the corporate leadership to make it happen. They had the political will, and they were able to find the money. And they were able to invent the materials. So they had all three of those things. Uh, but take any one of them out of the mix, and the whole thing falls apart. And sadly, essentially, that's what happened. Of course, the uh, will, the commitment, the political will evaporated. And that's a shame. I understand that there were a lot of competing interests. And I'm an aviation guy, so I see things through that lens. But I just think, man... Once they'd gotten some squadrons activated and the world had seen what that thing could really do and that new engine, uh, the Iroquois, oh, man, that would have been probably billions of dollars pouring into Canada, I think. I could be wrong. I could absolutely be wrong. But uh, one argument that was never made was they talk about, well, we've got the Beaumont missile, which, of course, you guys probably know never worked right. and It was dismantled after a while. But, okay, we've got the Beaumont. That's great for the first wave. What about the second wave? You know, fighter planes can go 
come back, refuel, rearm, and go out again. You can't do that with a one-shot missile. And the whole idea on leaning just on a single line of defense is very poor thinking. Now, of course, we all survived the Cold War, so in the long run, I guess, on the macro level, yeah, we it's okay. The, the world's still here. Nobody nuked anybody, so hooray for humanity. But from a technological and business standpoint, though, the, I think I think the Canadians missed the boat. Well, I shouldn't say the Canadians because a lot of Canadians wanted to keep it. Uh, the government at that time uh, missed the boat and probably cost their country dearly. But it was to America's advantage because a lot of those incredibly gifted Canadian engineers wound up working in the American space program or for Boeing, or and some of them went to Europe and England. So um, just breaks my heart to see it that happen but it was what it was okay end of tangent rant so uh anyway uh back to strong back becker uh i'm finding that there's a lot of information out there part of the problem is keeping it in a straight line because other companies uh like doused and them get involved and that's one of those times when you really need a flow chart to keep track of what's going on I want to keep these things easy to digest. I want to get the information out. I want to get it out correctly, but I want to do it in such a way that you enjoy listening to it. So I have a lot of work ahead of me. I have so many projects cooking right now because so much information has come my way in such a short time. So I'll try and keep the little dailies coming out, and uh, they really are no problem because, no kidding, I hook up the cell phone to my little... Uh, Osmo just to hold sometimes once in a while if the Osmo is not around I'll just set the thing up prop it up against a, a coffee cup or something and I literally just shoot these things off the top of my head while I'm sipping on coffee that that is my morning coffee you're seeing for realsies and uh, other than that guys I uh, hope you're enjoying these little diatribes I uh, really appreciate all the positive feedback and some of the stuff you guys have sent me is just great it's absolutely makes all this worth doing and I will now get back to work. Back to the research mines. Y'all have a great evening and take care. Bye-bye.